Welcome back on the Borders and Borders Hotline of the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Bob Pompiani with you until 11 o'clock at 412-575-2600. Remember to join us now Sunday night, 1135. After the late news, we will talk about Game 6. Also talk about what will be then a four-game completed series with the Pirates and the Phillies and the NFL Draft on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. That's coming up Sunday night, 1135. In the meantime, I want your thoughts about what's going on here on Twitter as well, at KD Pomp. Ray Penkoski says, Flyers wanted this game more pure and simple. And I would agree, Ray. They played that way to start this game. Although, like I said, I thought the Penguins came on real hard in the second, especially first 12 minutes of the third period when they dominated the play. But they just could not get it. Uh, they had opportunities on the power play. You can't go 0 for 5 and give up a shorty. When you do that, normally you lose, and they did. There was some banging in this game. The other difference I thought was Philadelphia was I, this was missing from their point of view for the first four games. They were not all that physical. Tonight they hit, out hit the Penguins 48 to 24. So when you do that, good things are going to happen, and I think it did for them tonight. Let's go to Marilyn and Monhall kicking us off tonight. Hey, Marilyn, how are you? I'm fine, huh? Thanks for taking my call. Sure. I was wondering how. Hornquist's absence, especially during the power plays, affected the Penguins tonight. Well, it, it you know the other night in Game Four, Maryland, uh, they had an opportunity right off the bat. It was a beautiful passing play from Crosby to Malkin, so he didn't necessarily miss Hornquist on that play. But I think tonight you saw why they need him in there. Just more opportunities to shoot the puck and knowing that he's in front of the net, causing havoc. And I thought tonight they got guilty of too many passes trying to be perfect. Although the last power play opportunity, they had some glorious chances and just could not beat Michael Naverth. And I'm, I'm kind of surprised they went with him, but I'm sure Dave Haxtell will go back to him on Sunday now that he's played well tonight. Let's go to Rick and Elizabeth. Hey, Rick, how you doing? How are you? Uh, hey, I agree with um, um, they pass all night long uh, for the most part I, outside of the last power play net and to me it's just Rick I think I'm having a problem with your phone you may want to try again uh, but I think your uh, question was about not shooting enough and as I said I think that was a problem on the power play sometimes that group especially the number one group gets a little too um, interested with the pass and not enough shots and again when you don't have maybe uh, lanes to shoot that are clogged by Patrick Hornquist in front of the net who's giving you an opportunity to get a screen uh, maybe you don't shoot as much. I'm not sure what the reason was tonight. I don't think they moved as well as they normally do. You know, you could pu you pass a puck around the uh, perimeter all night long. I think most teams will okay with that because you're not going to get many great opportunities. When they move and when they do what they're supposed to do, especially shots and rebounds, they can be very effective, and I thought they got away from that just a little bit. Let's go to Baker in Greensburg. Baker, how you doing? Doing well. How about you, Bob? Good, thanks. But I was wondering if you think... Uh... Gino might have done a little better tonight if his mom and dad. I thought Gino uh, played with a lot of passion. I thought he got over the line. Both teams were guilty of giving up a power play because of retaliata uh, retaliatory penalties. If Genny Malkin got involved with Brandon Manning, they went at it. The original penalty was going to be against Manning. That's when, as an experienced guy, you got to back off. And Malkin didn't. He engaged him more, and they got after it, and they as a result, got coincidental. And then later, Andrew McDonald of Philadelphia did the same thing, where he should have backed off. He went down uh, and got a retaliation penalty as well. So those are critical moments in games like this. The power play is big. Tonight it turned out not to be as big for the Penguins would have liked it to be. But you can't give those away when you have an opportunity. All right, let's go to Live 5, Dutch in Gibsonia. Hey, Dutch, welcome to the Sports Car. How are you tonight? I'm good, Bob. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Hey, uh, George, uh, um, uh, question, Bob, about George Contest. Why, why is he on this team? Do we not have anybody down in the minors that can come up and pitch, pitch a ball, pitch a game? Well, he's had his problems. There's no question. He's a setup guy, and he's not been able to, to hold on to games at times. I think the San Francisco Giants got rid of him for that very reason, although I think, you know, when he's on, he's a pretty good pitcher. Uh, I thought their bullpen needed more than it has right now. They're still looking for, you know, better options, long relief potentially. Uh, you know, you have Feliz, you have Contos, and you have uh, Vasquez now. And uh, if you can't get to the closer, you're going to have some issues. And in this game, they had an opportunity to at least keep it one-to-one -one and see what happens. But Contos gave up a triple after a double. Uh, and by the way, I don't – every time a ball goes out to right field with Gregory Polanco, I have – 
trepidations if I'm watching that. Just because he doesn't go after it aggressively, I thought Herrera on his triple just knew that he could really out-hustle and outwork maybe Polanco in right. Um, it seems like most things that go out there as an adventure, and he's really mired in a slump right now as well. So uh, they need to start hitting again, and in the four out of five that they've lost, they haven't had much offense. When they got one big eruption, which was against Colorado, they scored 10 runs, but in those other four games, not so much. Let's go out of line one. JR in the Toronto Heights. Uh, JR, how you doing? I'm doing good, Bob. How are you? Okay, hey, what's on your mind? I just had it. I had a thought. You got Simone comes from the bench to the number one line. You got Austin Reese that is like a Hornquist. Why didn't they just put him in front of the net for Crosby? I think Crosby plays well when he got somebody in front of the net. Simone's not a net on the outside. That's where Crosby's at. I just don't understand. Well, I think a lot of people would, you know, when that move was first made, there were other internal options. You mentioned Zach Aston Reese, and he's a a Hornquist type of player. But Crosby prefers speed up there, and that's why you have Gensel with him and Simone. And Simone in two games has picked up two assists. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised in game six, thank you for the call, if you see uh, a change there. And it could be Brian Russ moving up to the top line. I don't think it'll be Zach Aston Reese. I think they want to keep that fourth line as it is. Uh, I look for Derek Broussard to come up with something big in a game, uh, especially one like this coming up. He had a lot of shots on goal tonight, so I think he's getting better as this uh, you know, playoff series goes on. And I still believe he'll make a difference in some of these games. But uh, they may have to shuffle a lot. Mike Sullivan certainly will do that after a loss like this one. So I could see uh, maybe Sherry going up to that line as well. But I don't think it'll be Zach Aston Reese. Line four we go. That's Phil in Turtle Creek. Phil, you're on the sports call. Go right ahead. Hey, Bob. Love the show. Thank you for coming. Uh, I was just wondering, with uh, with Game 6 coming up on Sunday uh, and the Buccos being out there as well, do you think Nutting will keep the team around in Philadelphia until the Pens come home and try to catch a ride home with the Pens <laughs> to save some money? Oh, my. Uh, all I know is that they're going to be playing on the same day at 1 o'clock, uh, 1 or one thirty. I don't know the exact time I forget on that Phillies game, but uh, those stadiums are real close to each other, so that could be an interesting parking dilemma. Uh, if you're in Philadelphia that day. But it's supposed to be a beautiful day, so I'm sure there'll be some people arrive early, tailgate, and see what happens. But um, we'll find out. We've got the NFL draft also coming up. That takes place on Thursday. There are a lot of interesting uh, mock drafts, and, boy, they change day after day after day. We've seen everybody from an inside linebacker to a safety to a corner to an outside linebacker to a quarterback to a running back being mentioned tied to Pittsburgh. I, I, you know, Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin will go into this with an open mind. They'll see what's available to them. If they don't trade up, if they feel someone's that they really want on their board, high marks on their board is available to trade up, they may do that. But I think likely they'll just wait and see what comes to them because they do have a lot of different things that they need. I think Darius Geis is a running back they should make a play for, knowing that Le'Veon Bell is probably – um, in the final stages of his career here in Pittsburgh, since he doesn't seem interested in signing a long-term deal. Uh, they can certainly use another young safety. I still think the number one priority is an inside linebacker, given what has happened to Ryan Shazier, but they're going to need some outside help also. They have to know the outcome of Bud Dupree before this draft is held. They're going to have to make a decision. He is a fifth-year option, uh, and it has to be exercised by May the 3rd. So. By April the 26th and 27th and 28th, they will have made their decision on Dupree, I would think, which will influence what they do in that draft. But it will be fascinating. We have a live special 7.30 on KDK on Thursday night and also Saturday night as well. Let's go to Lou in Fox Chapel. Hey, Lou. Hello. Yes, you're on the air, Lou. Go ahead. Hi. um, I called about Chris Letang. Great skater, great offensive player. It seems to me he's out of position an awful lot. Here's what you thought about. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a high-risk player, a high-reward player. But when he's out of position, he can't clear the puck out of his zone sometimes. He was a minus three tonight. Uh, and in games like this, you really need better efforts defensively from everyone, not just him, but the entire team, I thought, uh, when it comes to clearing zones. They made mistakes. The goal by Giroux was a mistake. The the goal by Couturier, the game winner, was a mistake, all in their own zone. And when you do that against any team, especially a playoff team, you're going to pay the price for that one. We're going to take a break here. It's 412-575-2600. we got Jerry in Hempfield, Terry in Gibson. Coming up next, right here live on Pittsburgh CW.